Bronze rewards have decreased in Splinterlands and silver rewards have only gone up, meaning everyone is trying to get into silver now and stay there. In my last video guide, I showed you guys how to get into silver by buying or renting just one card. You guys can go check out that video up there. See how to get into silver. But even when you get into silver, it's sometimes hard now to even stay above that thousand rating. And so we're going to show you today a couple different methods I want to try out to stay in silver, rank up within silver by just renting cards using the DEC I earn and spending no extra money. Hey everyone, I'm Luke here on my play to earn channel. Let's start getting into talking about how to rank up in silver. This is one of my alt accounts that I used in my complete beginner's guide. And you can see that while I got into silver, I'm kind of hovering and sometimes getting bounced out of that thousand rating and dropping back down into bronze, which I said in the intro means less DEC, less loot chests and worse loot chests now with the season update. Now, as the season progresses, more and more people rank up with higher ratings, so it is a little bit easier to stay in silver, but still, we want to climb in silver without having to invest and buy credits, you know, to buy a 50, 100, $200 silver deck as some people are doing. This is the freebie version, you know, earn some DEC, let's go look at some rentals, and hopefully we can still stay in silver and rank up a bit and earn our rewards enough to outweigh the rentals we're gonna have to use our DEC on. So I have my trusty Excel sheet right here with the rentals I'm going to be looking at, cards that I eventually want to buy on this account to help me stay in silver, and we'll explain all of the math behind that here in a second. But I do wanna give a couple caveats here because uh, honestly, this video might become irrelevant for a couple of reasons. One, Chaos Legion packs are coming out. I think it's October 18th. So we'll see how that affects. I don't know when the new ranked battle, they're gonna make two different types of ranks and we'll see when they implement that. Uh, so you might actually wanna be saving up your DEC to buy Chaos Legion packs instead. Uh, that is up to you though, if you wanna take that risk of opening packs and seeing what you get. Uh, also, I think everyone is starting to catch on into this like, hey, I need to get into silver. So renting to silver right now is only getting more and more expensive and we'll talk about that. So potentially it's actually uh, maybe better depending on rental prices and how much it's gonna cost you to rent to get to silver. It may be better starting and just staying in bronze two or one. Getting out of bronze three, I think is really important right now, at least getting to that two or one. But even so, these rentals will help you win in bronze two and one. These cards will all be allowed to use. In this strategy, it's just gonna be level one cards. All right, so here we go. Here's the strategy. Let's talk about some math, then we'll get into rental cards and show you guys some battles. Hopefully it works out in the actuals. This strategy, number one that I'm gonna test out, I have three different strategies I wanna test out uh, among my three different alt accounts. This one is just simply renting the cheapest cards possible that will just help us give a rounded deck here in for low silver. So you're not gonna be renting any high level summoners, you're not gonna be renting any high level cards, it's all level one cards and some of the cheapest level one cards so that it gives us a ton of variety, you know, that we have an option for playing in a poison battle, we have an option for earthquake battle, we have an option when it's only the death deck, we have an option, you know, when it's no magic cards, stuff like that. It's not gonna give us the OP cards that are just gonna, you know, put this one card in and win every battle and, you know, spend 30 DEC a day renting it out. Uh, it's gonna be the, well, let's rent all the cheapest stuff that we can and hopefully give us a smart, intelligent balance in our deck where we can outplay our opponents even if we have some worse cards in certain situations. All right, so let's talk about the math and see if it plays out throughout this video. We're gonna start off with a 100% capture rate. This is battle zero. And my recommendation for that is let your you know account charge back up to 100% before renting a bunch of cards so that you can get the best you know bang for your buck as you play with your rentals. And then if you want to, this for this example, we're gonna play 28 battles and drop our account down to 75% energy capture rate because then you know over one day it recharges 25%, we should go back up to 100%. Of course, you can play more than that in a day if you want to and just let it you know drop down to 50% and recharge to 75%, whatever you're feeling. But I recommend as you start with all these rental cards, at least start with 100%. If we get 50% win rate times 8 DEC on average, then that means we're going to be getting, uh, let's see, oops, 
112 DEC net. Uh, to rent to silver, as I said, is going to be more expensive. It was at one point, you could go to peak monsters here. And a couple days ago, you could look at the CP uh, DEC a day and you could be getting, you know, sometimes cards that have 1500 CP uh, for, you know, whatever the division for one DEC a day is. So, you know, you could rent a card that's worth one DEC a day and be getting 1500 power. Then at some point it dropped down to, you could get a thousand out of it, especially if you go to gold cards. And now you can see that rental prices have gone crazy I mean, i'm trying to even find a card here's a card for 2000 cp gold and it's only 500 card power you know for one dec a day so rates have gone way up so it's going to make it harder for dec uh to get into silver even so if you haven't already that's going to be an issue for you you're going to have to you know spend all day clicking refresh and trying to get cheap rental deals to get enough power into silver Part of that is as the season starts, you get can get way better deals for rentals because everyone's renting the last day to get those last season rewards and then people kind of cool off. And if you just, you know, jump in day one and get as much power as you can rent for the whole season to get into silver, that's the best strategy I found. And then the prices increase as the season gets longer. But we'll also have to wait and see because it might just be with these new reward changes. People are trying to be in silver all the time, which is driving up these rental prices. So even in, we'll you know we'll see when the new season hits, but even then it might still be expensive. I don't know. So if you can somehow get you know 1,000 card power per one DEC a day, then of course it's 15 DEC a day to rent to get into silver. But I'm gonna assume that you're not gonna find that great of deal right now what is happening in the market. So I'm assuming right now it's gonna be more like 20 DEC to rent to silver per day. Then as I picked out all the cards that I want to rent, including summoners, neutral, and each deck besides the life, or sorry, besides the earth deck because the earth deck feels a little too expensive to rent for the cards I would want. That's gonna bring our DEC renting to 42.91 in theory, based on the prices I saw yesterday. Meaning, based on these numbers, we'd be getting about 69.09 DEC profit per day. I'm gonna actually go and rent these cards with this account, and instead, hopefully, I'm getting more around 75 DEC a day. Then I'm listing out these cards that I would want to buy with that if I'm not going for Chaos Legion packs, and that would be about, uh, you know, each one, you know, $8 for the neutrals, eight for fire, five for water, just some get some cards. Again, these rounded for the, you know, low level silver play. And all that would be roughly based on DEC being one cent per DEC right now is going to be <laughs> about 49 days before I could have enough DEC to buy all these cards. So you can either use the Splinterlands market or the Peak Monsters. Right now I'm gonna use the Splinterlands just to show you guys the cards and be able to explain with the picture right there a little bit more. We're gonna start off with Bright and Bloom and lock him up for, we're gonna do a week for this test deck. All right, finally went through Bright and Bloom for 0.39 DEC a day. The reason I want this card is because it is really powerful in earthquake battles when you can use the dragon deck and give all of your deck flying. And sometimes in really high mana battles that you know prolong the fight over and over and over, then having flying with that 25% dodge can add an extra you know layer to your team to really draw out the battle and hopefully dodge enough uh, shots that you end up winning. All right, we're gonna get Ouster for a 1.9 DEC per day, which is a little more than I wanna spend. I want these cheap uh, rentals, you know, mostly to be under one DEC per day. But with the new water deck reward cards, it seems like everyone is using magic in low silver. And so to have a summoner that's gonna give magic reflect to your whole team can be insanely powerful to counter that. And we picked up Delwyn for 0.36 DEC per day, which was a little bit cheaper than the rest of the market. So that was lucky. And what I like about this card is that it can add the plus one magic to any deck. So instead of the water deck, you could use it with the life deck and there's some uh, powerful magic there. There might be some dragon cards that we can rent that give us uh, magic damage as well. So we could add it to really any deck and it can you know, really surprise an enemy to use magic while not using the water deck. All right, moving on to neutrals. These can be really powerful to rent. If you're gonna rent anything, honestly, just rent these neutrals because they can play with, be played with any deck 
besides when there's the no neutrals rule set but you know that's not too often maybe one out of ten matches or so and so this can really level up each one of your deck and especially if it's a high mana battle some of these neutrals have high mana that can really round out the team give you extra power and so maybe even just renting those summoners and these neutrals might give you enough that you don't even need to rent for the other decks but we're still gonna try it we just rented another ooze for 0.1 dec per day and i literally locked it up for 180 days spent 18 dec on it because this is such an important card to have when you have one extra mana space in a battle it can tank up a shot slow down the rest of the team and so the other rental is paying 0.8 dec DEC a day and I'm just going to cancel it and keep this 0.1 DEC as long as I can. So that's what I recommend. If you find a card that is renting for way cheaper than it should, lock it up as long as you can. Even if it's 180 days, I'm never going to have to buy this card for the next half a year because I'm renting it out now. Goblin Mech, we also got for 0.1 DEC a day. This is nice. Again, it's 10 mana, but when there's a you know battle with 50 mana, it's hard for a low silver, silver level player to get enough mana to actually make their team in into you know those 40 50 mana team battles it has a lot of armor high attack and piercing so if another monster has one armor and he has you know four hits it's still going to go through the one armor and then the three health as well instead of just taking away that one armor renting rusty android for point one again another magic reflect that you can have in every single deck if you can use neutrals for that battle sandworm another high mana but high damage to the back line the gelatinous cube is really important for poison battles because it has high HP and will scavenge a health anytime a monster dies. Prismatic energy is one you can go for. We're going to hold off for now because it is at three DEC per day right now. But if you can find a good deal on it, nab it up because it again is one of those neutrals with magic reflect, but also deals magic damage at the same time with a high HP meaning it can be a very good you know, snipe card or you can put it in the front if you think they're gonna front load magic damage. For now, we're gonna hold off though because three DEC is more than I wanna pay for it right now. All right, so far after all of that, we've only spent 3.16 DEC a day besides the DEC renting to silver. You can see, even if you just rent neutrals, those cards are there. Those five cards are only gonna cost you 0.5 DEC a day to help every one of your decks. Unfortunately, the price for Molten Ogre went from 0.1 to 0.3 as of yesterday, but a good card that's still cheap enough that can you know, help you in high mana battles and take away melee attack from the rest of the enemy team. A free Elder to sometimes help you in Earthquake or Poison battles because it becomes the last monster alive. It's gonna gain a lot more health and still have uh, two magic damage and higher speed. Lava Launcher is hopefully a reward card that you can pull from a loot chest because it can really help your fire deck. It can sit in the second place in a fight and absorb a lot of snipe shots. And then it also can have range attack from the front. So it can slot from the second tank into the first tank and help you win more fire matches. Phineas Rage, another fire deck with reach. So especially with the plus one melee that you can get from your summoner can do a lot of damage from second place in line. Pyromancer, it can be great in your fire deck to have two blast opponents, or at least this blast guy has five health instead of the other one in your normal deck that only has two health. Naga Fire Wizard can reduce melee and ranged attacks and do two magic damage. And if we combine them with Delwyn using the dragon deck, it can be three magic damage. So it's a good card to have in the back pocket. Lastly, in the fire deck, Pyromaniac to do the two range damage in the back line. All right, so you can see I got all those fire cards for just 2.31 DEC a day. Not bad. All right, moving on to the water deck. Hopefully you bought this uh, Venari Wavesmith when you watch my beginner's guide because the price keeps going up and up. It used to be, I think, at like $1.50 when I did the video. Now it's at $3.50, meaning you're probably going to have to rent this for now unless you bought it uh, when you saw that video. But luckily you can rent it for about 0.48 DEC a day. Again, it's super powerful to have magic damage and give yourself two armor to all of your water deck. Battle Orca is an option that you can go for, giving you a little bit of melee attack, but usually mostly just to have the extra five health for only three mana. But I'm going to skip it for now, hopefully going for the Kelp Initiate, which hopefully isn't too much more expensive DEC per day. I don't love Sea Genie, but it is so cheap to rent for some extra mana damage, so we're gonna do it. Windmaster is going to reduce the ranged attack of all enemy monsters if you think they're gonna use a bunch of ranged 
attack, this can be great to have in your water deck. Pirate Archer is gonna give us that blast damage. Sea Monster for the tank that can heal, do a lot of damage, and can especially be good for poison or earthquake battles because it will heal, especially if you don't put it in the very front of your team. Whew, I grabbed the Kelp Initiate for 0.21 DEC per day. That was much cheaper than the rest. And this is a great tank for low mana ba battles with the five health. You use the Wavesmith to give the two armor on it as well. It can be a super powered two mana tank. Lastly, for the water deck, we're gonna get the Captain's Ghost for the two magic plus one is gonna be doing three. And then if an enemy team has a tank that heals itself, it can apply the Affliction to make it stop healing. All right, so after summoners, neutrals, fire, and water, we are now at 27.5 DEC renting per day with the extra rent to silver, but we only spent 2.036 on the water, which is actually lucky, lucky because I found some really great deals, uh, low rental prices on some of these cards that shouldn't have been that low. So again, you can be patient, you can refresh the page, you can look for really good deals and then lock them up for longer times. And this only cost me around two DEC per day to really boost up my water deck. All right, as I said earlier, I'm gonna skip the Earth deck for now, unless you have Mylor. A lot of the cards I wanna rent are, you know, anywhere from two to even like 10 DEC per day, meaning it's not gonna be cheap enough for me to rent and really use the Earth deck in my opinion right now. All right, moving on to the Life deck, we're gonna get the Warrior of Peace to remove some of their melee attack damage. If you don't have the Venari Crystal Smith, go get it because it's gonna give you double heals on the life team. Dejin Renova for the extra health, two magic damage, and if you use Delwyn for the dragon deck, that's gonna be three magic damage. All right, the Sheriff, because it's a high mana, three range attack to a snipe, and he's just so cheap that might as well. All right, the Bard is actually important because it's gonna cleanse your tank, which if you're running double heals or things like that and someone lands Affliction on your tank and removes the ability to be healing, this card can remove that and keep your tank healthy. The Evangelist is gonna give us more cheap range damage and can take away flying. All right, the Armorsmith is going to be one of our most expensive cards at 1.8 DEC a day, but it is so powerful to be able to replenish the armor on your team that I felt like uh, I kind of have to rent them for the life deck. Lastly, we're going to grab the Temple Priest just in case we run the Delwyn comp with the Dragon deck and get the plus one magic, meaning he would do three magic damage. All right, so after the life deck, that brings up our total to 30.8 DEC per day. And for the life deck specifically, 3.36 DEC a day. And most of that honestly was from the Armorsmith. So maybe you can make an argument from not renting the Armorsmith, but I feel like it's so powerful that I wanted it. All right, two decks to go. Let's not lose our focus. Let's not lose our energy onto the death deck. Undead Rex for the high mana battles and a ton of damage. Undead Minotaur, I don't love, but it's so cheap in certain situations like when there's a rule set of blast and monster melees have a sneak attack he's going to be doing damage double damage to both backline members so something like that can be helpful grim reaper for the cheap ranged attack damage plus affliction Octopider, more range damage. Boogeyman for the magic damage plus slow. Shadowy Presence, even though it's almost a DEC per day and it's not that sexy of a card, you know, one mana, four health, no attack. It can absorb, you know, a couple snipe shots. It can absorb a sneak attack in the back or, you know, you put it in the front line to absorb a, a few shots before your tank gets into the front. So it can be really powerful. And then lastly, Darkest Mage for some more magic attack damage. All right, with one deck left to go, we are now at 33 DEC a day. And you can see the death deck is now sitting just under summoners with 2.58 DEC per day. For the dragon deck, there isn't many cards that are cheap enough to make it worth it, but there are a few that can be helpful. Dijin Chowala is one that I'm gonna grab for 0.3 DEC, a huge tank, armor, health, and thorns. Serpentine Mystic for the extra magic damage and affliction to stop the healing on their tanks. Bagling Bowman for the sneak attack with the range. And then I was thinking about getting Fire Spitter, but unfortunately the rental price has doubled within the last day because it has so much card power to it as well as an epic dragon monster. So I think I'm gonna skip out on it for now. Woo, that was a lot. Hopefully you guys hung in there and hopefully that was helpful. It is going to bring our total from those cards to around 15 DEC per day, plus 
what I estimate that's gonna take you to rent to silver 20 DEC a day for a total of 35. And I only had to skip out on the prismatic energy from the neutral and then the fire spitter from the dragon. Pretty much got everything else that I wanted and some of it lower. So hopefully I'm still estimating a 77 DEC per day profit but let's go do our 28 battles and see what our actual results will be of course they can vary you know i could go on a 20 win streak here and then the next day i could you know <laughs> you know only win five out of my 28 matches but we're gonna test it out just to see what we get today and hopefully show you some good results all right first match up here we go with our new powerful rented deck all right we're just gonna go full magic damage because honestly <sighs> the the you know, no abilities is so frustrating to play around. Oh, and of course he does the same tactic and we'll see if he wins just because we didn't rent the prismatic energy. <laughs> Ooh, our sea genie's gonna help us though. And so is this guy. So it looks like renting is gonna indeed help us win our first battle, which we would have not have won without renting the ghost and the sea genie and the gelatinous cube. All right, so 8.6 DEC off our first win. So better than I was expecting for low silver right now. See, in the second match, I can already tell I'm gonna win just because I went, rented the goblin mech. And of course, the sandworm. All right, another W and with the win streak at 9.6 DEC, let's go. All right, so let's skip ahead because I'm not gonna show all 28 of my battles. All right, guys, we finished our 28 matches and you can see through the stats here, I didn't do too bad a lot of green in the midst of the red losses so feeling pretty good about that and we of course bumped up from like 1050 rating to almost 1400 rating so how does that pan out in terms of dec value compared to our rentals let's check out the numbers you can see in my strategy setup what i was hoping for was my dec renting would be around 42 dec my profit after that would be about 70 DEC a day based on a 50% win rate and 8 DEC on average per win, which would mean if I had a 78 roughly DEC a day, it's going to take me 49 days to buy all these cards without any extra loot chest bonuses. So instead, we can see that we did a lot better. You can see the DEC I was earning even in low silver was more around the average of 9.9 .9 DEC. Some of that higher because of win bonuses, some of it uh, you know less because of the energy capture rate going down but almost 10 DEC per win. Now that can change over the season as players rank up and the rating goes up. Uh, we also have to take into consideration that I was able to get 18 wins, which was more than my 50% win rate because I was starting in you know, low silver 1050 rating. So now that I'm at you know 1380, does it get harder to win matches? And you know, does the DEC increase enough to offset it? So obviously, this can go in many different ways and your numbers can vary. This isn't an exact science, but this is just to show you guys a strategy and to test it out for at least one day. DEC net over the 28 battles was about 180 here. Renting came out a little bit cheaper because I was able to get some good deals and I didn't go for the fire spitter and the pres uh, prismatic energy. And so that drops our profit only to 144, even with spending 20 DEC to rent to silver. So about double the profit that I was hoping for because I got a little bit higher of a win rate percentage. And then of course, you know, the DEC was a little bit higher than I was expecting as well in low silver. So plus is there and you know, your results are gonna vary and you know, maybe I could have done better if I, you know, practice with these cards that I rented a little bit more and you know, maybe there's a few matches that I could have won instead, but hey, I'm happy with 144. And then if we went and bought some of these cards that I was renting, I added it all up to about 4,000 DEC, which if I'm earning that 144 a day, it's going to be about 28 days to purchase, a little under a month to get all these cards where I'm not going to have to start renting them anymore. Of course, some of the cards, it's better to rent. These aren't, as you can tell, like here in the fire, I was renting, you know, what is that? Seven cards. And I'm only going to plan to buy three fire cards. That's because some expensive cards can be like, you know, 10 to $20 to buy worth of DEC, but then for some reason to rent it, it's 0.5 DEC a day. And then there's other cards that are 0.5 DEC to rent, but are only $2. So it's like, well, I might as well buy those cards up first because it's much easier to get to $2 worth of DEC than 
you know, the $10 and the rental prices are pretty much exactly the same. So that was strategy test number one to survive silver with only renting cards and not spending any money in credits. I hope that was helpful for you. Remember, you can also save up your DEC for Chaos Legion packs coming out in a couple weeks. Don't forget about that. Again, if this video is helpful for you, subscribe, comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Maybe cards I overlooked that would also be helpful for people to rent. Put that in the comments as well, and I'll see you guys in the next video.